Hello, this is a brief presentation on double entry bookkeeping. We will be using a web based application called General Ledger Online to demonstrate various concepts in double entry bookkeeping. This presentation is for informational purposes only. If you have specific questions about your particular situation, please consult a qualified professional. This presentation comprises of two parts. The first part, we go behind the motivation for having accounting in the first place. Then we define what a general ledger is. Followed by, we look at some of the basic concepts in double entry bookkeeping. And finally, in the first part, we look at common financial statements. In the second part, we go through a typical accounting cycle. For that purpose, we utilize a web-based application called General Ledger Online and go through all the steps a business would typically go through in recording their financial transactions and reporting their financial results. More information on General Ledger Online and general ledger accounting can be found at microguru.com. Before we get into details of general ledger and double entry bookkeeping, let's see why we need accounting in the first place. We use accounting to measure and monitor the financial activity of a business. Such information is very helpful for business managers to make sound business decisions. So what exactly is a general ledger? A general ledger is simply a set of accounts maintained by a business to keep track of all the financial transactions a company makes. All financial activities of a business, no matter where they are made, eventually make their way into the general ledger. Let's take an example of a retail establishment, say a supermarket. At the end of a day, or a week, or a month, the sales from the cash register are tallied or summed. Such sales are then aggregated and recorded in the general ledger. Likewise, any activity, any financial activity that is, in any part of the business, either immediately or eventually makes its way into the general ledger. Next, let's define what double entry bookkeeping is. Double entry bookkeeping is simply a system of how to record financial activity of a business. It comprises of set of conventions and set of rules. Fortunately, there are not that many conventions and not that many rules. Once you get to know these conventions and rules and memorize them, they're quite easy to apply and quite consistent from situation to situation. The first important concept in accounting is the accounting period. Accounting results are recorded and reported over a defined period of time referred to as the accounting period. For most businesses, the accounting period is a calendar year. That is, the accounting period starts on January 1st and ends on December 31st of the year. But for some seasonal businesses, that may not make sense. Therefore, a company may choose an accounting period that is other than a calendar year. Such as, a company may start its year on April 1st and end it on March 
31st of the following year. Accounts are used to record and categorize amounts involved in business transactions. Accounts are also used to summarize the effects of financial activities. And the end goal is to use these summary accounts to create financial statements such as the income statement and the balance sheet. The most important attribute of an account is its type. There are five general types of accounts. The first type of an account is an asset account. Simply put, an asset is what a business owns. The second type of account is a liability account. This account captures what a business owes to other businesses or individuals or to employees or to the government. The third type of account is an equity account. This account tells what the owners of business have invested or accumulated in earnings over time. The fourth type of an account is an income account which is the revenue received by a business while selling its products or rendering its services. Finally, we have expense accounts and those accounts capture the assets such as cash, used up or liabilities incurred by a business to help sell its products and to render its services. In accounting, you will also hear of chart of accounts. A chart of account is a list of all accounts in the journal ledger. For example, here we see a listing of accounts for a business. An account has a number, in this case bank account has a number of 10,000 and a type of asset. A business would have multiple asset accounts, liability accounts, equity accounts, income accounts, and expense accounts. For example, a company pay sal pays salaries, so they would have a salaries expense account. If they buy office supplies, they would also have an office supplies expense account. Next, we look into how a business records its financial activity. The financial activity of a business is recorded as a journal entry. There are specific details for a journal entry that must be recorded. The very first detail is the date of the activity. The second are the accounts affected by that activity. The third are the amounts associated with those accounts. And finally, a memorandum about the activity so we can recall why that activity was recorded as a general entry in the first place. Before we get into further details of recording a journal entry, we must understand what are debits and what are credits. All amounts in a journal entry are classified as either debit or credit. In accounting, debit simply means left and is represented with a positive amount. Credit simply means right and is represented as a negative amount. The left and right categorizations will become obvious when we look at a sample journal entry. A credit may be shown with a leading negative sign, for example, minus 10. Or a credit may also be shown in closing parentheses, 
For example, parenthesis 10. The shorthand for debit is DR. The shorthand for credit is CR. Positive and negative amounts in double entry bookkeeping do not have the same meaning as negative and positive amounts in mathematics. Whether an account balance is increased by a debit that is a positive amount or credit that is a negative amount is a matter of accounting convention and is based on the type of account in question. Here is a very small cheat sheet which will let you remember uh, how to use debit and credit with various account types. The asset account has a normal balance of debit. That is, whenever we post a debit to an asset account, its balance increases. Conversely, liability and equity accounts have a normal balance of credit. Therefore, to increase a liability or an equity account, we post a credit. To decrease a liability or equity account, we post a debit. Income accounts have a normal balance of credit and expense accounts have a normal balance of a debit. That is, to increase an expense account, you would post a debit amount to that expense account. To reduce an expense, you would post a credit amount to an expense account. Now that we have looked at the basic concepts, we are ready to look at a general entry. As you notice, the very first thing we have in the general entry is the date of the general entry, which is January 15, 2012. We also have four accounts involved in this general entry, cash, cost of goods sold, sales, and widgets inventory. We also have a memo to remind us why we made this general entry, which was to record sales of widgets. We have a debit of $10 to the cash account, which increases the balance of the cash account. Cost of goods sold, which is an expense account, has a debit of $8. Since it is an expense account, the debit increases that expense. Sales has a credit of $10 and since income has a normal balance of credit that $10 increases our sales by $10. Widgets inventory is an asset which has a normal balance of a debit. Recording a credit here reduces that asset and that actually makes business sense because we have sold inventory so our assets or inventory has been reduced. Also note on this general entry for cash and cost of goods sold we have debit entries which appear in the left column whereas sales and widgets inventory are recorded in the rightmost column. That is where that left and right terminology we used earlier to define debits and credits. Debits appear in the left column and the credits appear in the right column. When credits appear by themselves they are preceded by a negative sign or enclosed in parentheses. To correctly record a general entry one must know the accounting equation. 
When recording a journal entry, the following equation must hold true for that journal entry. That is, the total amounts posted to asset accounts must equal to the sum of amounts posted to liability, equity, income minus expense accounts must be equal. In other words, if we summed up all debits and all credits for a given journal entry, they must all add up to zero. Let's look at how the accounting equation applies to the journal entry we looked at earlier. In this journal entry, the sum of all amounts posted to asset accounts is 2. Likewise, the sum of all amounts posted to liabilities, equities, income minus expense account is also 2. Therefore, both sides are equal. If we took the sum of all amounts posted as credits and debits, they end up adding up to zero as our accounting equation requires. When we talk about accounts and account types, we also need to be aware of what are known as contra accounts. For, nor for a normal asset, liability, and equity account, we can define a corresponding contra account. A contra account is used to accumulate reductions from the normal asset, liability, or equity accounts. A contra account behaves the exact opposite of the normal corresponding account. For example, a debit would normally increase an asset account. However, a debit would decrease the balance of a contra asset account. The balance of a contra account is deducted from the corresponding normal account to arrive at a net balance. Let's look at an example. Equipment is an asset account. Equipment depreciation is a contra asset account. Let's say we place $100,000 worth of equipment in service. Over time, the value of that equipment reduced due to depreciation. So we acc accumulate that reduction in value or usage of that equipment as equipment depreciation. Here we have $20,000 of equipment depreciation. The equipment depreciation is a contra asset account. By reducing the equipment by the equipment depreciation, we have a net equipment value of 80000 We could have directly reduced the equipment value by posting a credit to the equipment account. However, if we had done that, we would have lose, lost sight of the equipment depreciation accumulated over time. And that is the value of having a separate contra account. Let's look at the account ledger next. An account ledger summarizes the total effect of all the related journal entries on a given account balance. For example, let's say we have a sales account. The account ledger for sales account may look something like this, where we have a date and a memo of the amount posted to that account, the amount and the balance. So on January 15, 2012, we had sales of widgets for $10 and we have total sales for the year so far 
of ten dollars. On February 1st, we had sales of bolts for five dollars, so now we have a running balance of fifteen dollars for the sales. Next, let's look into real versus nominal accounts. Asset, liability, and equity accounts are called real accounts because their balances are perpetually maintained. We will see an example of this when we go through the accounting cy cycle. For now, just remember the amounts posted to asset, liability, and equity accounts are maintained perpetually and are never zeroed out. Contrast that to income and expense accounts that are called nominal accounts because their balances are transferred to appropriate real accounts at the end of the accounting period. So this is in a sense zeroing out of all income and expense accounts and their balances being transferred to real accounts. Once we are certain that we have recorded all the financial act activity correctly, we are in a position to create financial statements. Before we create any financial statements, we typically prepare a trial balance. A trial balance is a list of all accounts in the ledger and their corresponding balances. A trial balance is sort of a sanity check before we go about preparing other statements such as the income statement and the balance sheet. Let's take a look at a sample of a trial balance for Acme Corporation for the year ended March 31st, 2012. Here in the second column we see the names of all the accounts involved. In the rightmost two columns we see the debits and credits. And these are the summation of all the debits and all the credits posted to the corresponding accounts. The trial balance ensures us that all our amounts are in balance. So if you look at the bottom row, we see there are a total of debit of 290 and a total credit of 290. So we are certain, at least from a recording point of view, all the debits and credits are equal. Once we are pleased with the trial balance, we are ready to prepare other financial statements. The first statement we'll look at is the balance sheet. A balance sheet shows what a company owns and what it owes. It is typically prepared at the end of an accounting period and it only includes the real accounts. Recall the real accounts are asset, liability, and equity accounts. Here we see an example of a balance sheet for Acme Corporation for the year ended December 31st, 2012. We see assets listed for this company for a total assets of $100 and we have total liabilities and equity of $100. This statement is called a balance sheet is because the total assets are in balance with total liabilities and equity. Here we have total assets of $100 and total liabilities and equity of $100. If those two amounts did not match, then we know we have an issue with our balance sheet. Next, we look at the income statement. The income statement measures the result of business operations during an accounting period. The idea is to objectively measure the profitability of a company. The income statement as contrasted with the balance sheet only include the nominal accounts. Here is an example of an income statement for Acme Corporation. Note here the income statement is over a range of time 
versus at a point in time. For a balance sheet, we had the balance sheet prepared as of December 31st, 2012. For an income statement, you're looking at the date range is January 1st, 2012 to December 31st, 2012. The income statement reports profitability over a defined period of time. Here we see over this period of time the company took in sales of $200 and it spent $190 to make those $200 for a net income of $10. Statement of cash flow is another important financial statement. It provides a reconciliation of cash on hands. In effect, it provides the total net effect of cash generated and used by operating, investing, and financial activities of a business. A logical question to ask is, why do we need a statement of cash flow when we already have income statement that gives us a measure of profitability of the business? A company may be profitable, but may not have enough cash on hand to pay its obligations, such as employee salaries and government taxes, and may be at risk of going off out of business as a consequence. So even though a company can be profitable, it might be cash strapped and might go out of business because of that. That is why statement of cash flow is a statement widely looked at in addition to income statement and the balance sheet. Here is an example of a cash flow statement for Acme Corporation as of December 31st 2012. There are three sections to it. The income generated or specifically cash generated from operating activities, the cash generated or used by investing activities, and ca or cash generated by financing activities. For example, if you look at the operating activities, the company had a bus business income of $1,000. It also recorded a depreciation expense of $200. Since that is only a book expense, meaning no cash really changed hand, we add that back to the net income to arrive at a cash of $1,200 from operating activities. Similarly, we do the same thing for investing activities and financing activities. For example, the company issued stock worth $2,000, hence $2,000 cash was brought in. That is not income, but financing that company was able to get by issuing stock. We have total cash flow. To that, we add the cash at the beginning of the year. And finally, we arrive at the end cash balance of 3250 at the end of the year, ensuring us that the company has enough cash on hand um, to conduct its business. Another common statement prepared for a business is the statement of retained earnings. This statement reconciles the balance of the retained earnings account from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Here is an example of statement of retained earnings for Acme Corporation for the year ended December 31st, 2012. In the first row, we note that as of January 1st of 2012, retained earning had a balance of $5. The company made $10 for the year 2012 and the owners either withdrew or were given dividends of $3 during the year. Therefore, at the end of year, on December 31st, we have a retained earning balance of $12.
This concludes the first part of this presentation. We have gone through all the basic concepts in double entry bookkeeping and gone over some of the common financial statements prepared. In the next part, we will look at the accounting cycle, specifically all the different activities that occur uh, for a business during a year as far as recording financial transactions go. In the second part of this presentation, we will go through an accounting cycle. An accounting cycle consists of typical activities a business goes through during its accounting period. We will be using an application called General Ledger Online. General Ledger Online is a web-based implementation of the classic General Ledger. More information about General Ledger Online can be found at microguru.com. An accounting cycle consists of several activities. The very first activity a business must do is to define its accounting period. It must also establish the chart of accounts that it uses to record its business activity, enter beginning balances for the real accounts, record transactions throughout the year, prepare financial statements, close the nominal accounts and transfer the balances to real accounts, and then continue the cycle again for the next year. We will begin first by defining an accounting period in General Ledger Online. To get started, we'll create an accounting period. Our accounting period starts on the 1st of January of 2012 and ends on December 31st of 2012. We set this accounting period as our default period. So we press this switch to link. So now we know as we record the general entries, they will be recorded to this accounting period. Next, we will establish our chart of accounts. Since this is our first year of operation, we'll need to establish Chart of Accounts, which is available under the Accounts tab. Press the Create New Link, enter the account number, select the account type, and press Create. Now we have created one account called cash of type asset. It is also possible to import accounts after import I have my whole set of accounts I will be using to record transactions for my company. Now that we have defined our chart of accounts, we will be entering the beginning balances for these accounts. Under the General Journal tab, press the Beginning Balance link, and I'm presented with the Journal Entry screen. I've hand entered the beginning balances for the accounts. I'm ready to post it. In the general journal, I see the beginning balance journal entry posted now. During the course of the year, we record transactions for the business. 
Let's record some transactions as the year goes by. As business transactions occur, we are going to make transactions in the general general. Here I press the normal transaction button and I'm going to go ahead and enter some um, amounts for the transaction. In this transaction I'm recording sales of widgets. I receive cash of ten dollars. The cost of goods being sold is eight dollars. The sales are being increased by ten dollars and the inventory is being reduced by eight dollars. Go ahead and press post and now I see a general entry here. If I wanted to see all the amounts posted to the inventory account for example I would go to accounts and go to the inventory account and press ledger. Here I see an initial amount of 400 and another reduction of the eight dollars worth of inventory I just made and it gives me a total running balance a current balance of 392. At the end of the period we prepare financial statements. Statements if you press the income statements link you get the income statement for the period. Here we, as you recall, recorded $10 for the sale, $10 in cost of goods sold with a net income of $2. Similarly, we can go to the balance sheet and as we see we have under the statements we also have trial balance which gives you a listing of all the accounts and their debits and credits and a cross footing of 960 to demonstrate all the entries are in balance. Now that we have completed our year, we'll be closing the nominal account balances into real accounts. And press the closing entry link, period closing entry link. And here we want the date to be the last day of the year assuming that's when we are closing and that's generally when you close at the end of the year. Here the system is already summarizing all your sales, all the expenses and then this is your net income which will be closed into retained earning. Now we'll make a note here closing entry and we press post general entry to make the closing entry. After the closing entry, all the nominal account balances have been closed into the real account. So if we go under trial balance, you'll notice here all the sales and expense accounts do not have a balance. They have been closed into the equity account. Similarly, if we go and look at the balance sheet, the current earnings line is gone and that amount has been now closed into retained earning. Now we have a fully closed balance sheet for the year 2012. We are now ready to transfer the ending balances of real accounts for this year as beginning balances for the next year. At this point all our financial statements have been finalized and we are now ready to move on to the next year. In the next year we will be making the beginning balance entries for the real accounts which are in effect the ending balances of the year 2012. In General Ledger Online we can go ahead and retrieve those balances from the trial balance. If we go to the trial balance for, for the year 2012 we can press this generate beginning balance entry. Here I have the ending balances for the year 2012 which I can copy and I will be able to use those to populate the beginning balances for the next year. Since we are starting a new year we will have to go ahead and create 
a new period. So we go to the accounting periods, we create a new period, in this case we are going to 2013, press create and we do want to switch to 2013 since we already closed 2012, say switch to and 2013 becomes our current year. Go to general journal and I will go ahead and import the journal entry I copied from the last year containing the ending balances for 2012. Here are the balances. I will say import now. To make sure everything works properly, here it says total journal entries posted is 1. I can go to my statements, look at the trial balance, and it shows the balances, the ending balances from 2012 now posted as beginning balances for 2013. And now I go on and make the journal entries throughout the year as we did in 2012. This concludes our presentation on double entry bookkeeping using General Ledger Online. We covered the basic concepts in double entry bookkeeping and we demonstrated those concepts using General Ledger Online, a web-based implementation of the classic General Ledger. For more information, please visit microguru.com and thank you for watching.